And please, as children of God, please understand that enough is enough. Amen. That's right. And we're not waiting on people to march or anything like that, mm -hmm. but the, the word is already being decreed. Yes, and I want them to know that those angels are in Barbados right now. Amen. And when those angels show up, there's nothing you can do about it. You do not interfere with children. They have angels that are assigned to them. And their angels are in the presence of God, beholding the face of God. In other words, they are paying attention to whatever the assignment of God is for that time. So I want you to know that our government is in trouble. The uh, IDB in trouble. Called the Ark, called Caribbean, all of them in trouble. We do not come here and play that game with our children. That is mass deception. And what we need is more men and women of God to come out of the woodwork and begin to speak to this nation, speak to the political hierarchies over this nation, that we will not allow this to happen. I want to make sure that my voice goes out there very, very clearly. Now, I stand in absolute judgment from God against yes, this situation. Yes, 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 yes. So, those of you who are a part of our ministry, you understand what our place is here yes. in the nation. Amen. And I want to decree and declare that their time is up. A lot of people are afraid, but the time of being afraid, that time is over. This was a very, very serious mistake that they made in the realm of the spirit. Now, for a lot of individuals who seem to not know what was really happening, it is our responsibility as children of God to set the atmosphere over our nation. Yes. Yes. We control the climate. Yes. And in order to control the climate, we have to be vocal. Yes. And we have to demand that balance is restored. Yes. Yes. That the kingdom of God comes and the will of God be done in yes. earth as it is be done in Barbados, yeah, let's yeah, say, yeah, as it yeah, is in yeah, heaven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But too often what we have been caught doing is not understanding what's going on. Mm -hmm. And I want you to, um, in the next minute or so, I want you to join me in a prayer of covering over this nation. Um, and the reason for this is that when the church is asleep, the the world system will set up their idols. And a lot of individuals don't really know why the terminal was named after Archbishop Brandon Williams. Now, for those of you who understand the mind and understand consciousness, his work, and if you have the chance, you leave here today, go check it out. In your brain, there is the system of neurons, what's called neurology. The way how it operates is that there is what is called a post-synaptic terminal yes. <laughs> and a pre-synaptic terminal. Mm -hmm. When you are thinking, your thought is an electrical pulse yes. Yes. that goes through the pre-synaptic terminal and that electricity changes from electricity to chemical floats across what is called the synaptic cleft or the synaptic gap, attaches itself to receptors in the postsynaptic terminal and then depolarizes and flows to that next synaptic terminal on the way to where that thought will become a thing. Yeah. That's how it works. When you become very high in the realm of the spirit in, in spiritual matters, or in demonic matters, your name becomes powerful. Yeah. That's why the demon spirit told the sons of Sceva, Jesus we know, yeah. uh -huh. and Peter we know, uh -huh. and 
call we know, but we don't know you. Your names ain't that high up here. So you put Archbishop Granville William Terminal, which now allow forces that are moving in and out of our country to meet at the terminal. And if you're not careful, you're going to see a lot of very strange things beginning to happen at that tournament. But we want to be clear right now in Jesus' name. We set angels between the terminal. We set angels at the terminal to block the entrance and the exit of demonic spirits, demonic entities, and satanic people that want to move in and out of Barbados. We set angels of fire, seraphims, angels of fire with power and with swords to cut the heads off any demonic person that is moving in and out of Barbados creating problems. We bind right now the forces of darkness over this nation. We declare and lay ways to them by the power of the Holy Spirit. We call in the Lord of hosts. Michael and his great army to come in today in the mighty name of Jesus and lay a race to the adversary, lay a race to every satanic, demonic principality and power that has come in Barbados, that exists over Barbados. All of the rulers of darkness, may they be shattered, let their heads be severed, let their heads roll today according to the power of the word of the Lord. Let
something glorious is about to happen to you today. Every chain is broken where your life is concerned. Every week, come on, every measure, every shackle, everything the enemy is trying to tie you up with broken today. Would you lift your hands and receive this today? Bible says that when Peter was in prison, when that angel showed up and touched him, said, Peter, get to put your clothes on, put your sandals on. Bible says the moment that Peter started to move, everything that they had on him fell off. All the handcuffs fell off. All the shackles just loosened from off of his feet. But there's an angel of the Lord in this room today. And whatever the enemy is trying to tie you with, is falling off of you right now in Jesus' name. Success. It will be a shock to your friends, it will be a shock to your family, and it will be a shock to every person who's trying to stop you. Shall I receive that in Jesus' name? I receive that in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, you may be seated today. Let's let's go to work. This morning, I want to begin on a greater level the process of sharing insight with you that will really lift you to a new place in God. We're not going back to the regular kind of preaching and teaching any longer. It's, it's not helping. We want something that will help us. And so I want to talk to you today about the Father of Glory. And as we get into this word today, I want you to turn to the person next to you. And I want you to look at them. And I want you to tell them the Father of Glory is visiting you today. The Father of Glory is visiting you today. I receive. I receive. Hallelujah. The Father of glory is visiting you today. Amen. Now, I want to share this with you from a very deep perspective. I'm going to start in Acts chapter 7. And uh, I want to use this verse of scripture to help you to understand that the Father of glory was or is now not just manifesting himself. There are patterns in the Bible that once you see them, once you find them, they, and they go from the Old Covenant all the way through the New Covenant, right out to Revelations. That's a pattern that you can take and follow. 
And um, when you find a pattern that you can follow that, uh, or what I call a gold, a golden thread, mm -hmm. when you find it and you hold on to it, you can actually claim a manifestation of it in your life. Now, when we talk about glory, glory is the Greek word doxa. It's where we get the word doxology. Doxology is actually a scientific study of the move or flow of the blessing. It's when you take the time to study how the blessing works and how the blessing moves how you can connect yourself to the blessing of God, then things will begin to clear. When you get to Genesis 1, you will see that the blessing showed up in the very first chapter of the Bible. And God blessed them and said, Are you there? Mm -hmm. And you can follow all the way through to Revelations and see when the blessing is still there in Revelations. But Back in the day, you remember the old folk when, you know, church was finished, they used to sing what we call the doxology. Kevin, you would know that on your back, you know. Uh, and they would sing this song that says, Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. See? Because we understand that the blessing is something that moves. It can go from one person to the next. It can amplify or it can increase. So remember when the Ark of the Covenant was at Obi Eden's house. He didn't do anything different. It's just that the power was there to make blessing flow. So from today, you receive an anointing, a change in your life that will make blessing flow. Amen. I receive that. I receive that. Can you lift your hands and receive that? In other words, we're blessed, but sometimes the blessing that we have on our lives is not moving. Blessing is supposed to flow like current, like electricity. It is designed to make things happen. So I want your blessing to flow this morning and not be stagnant. What they call that flow of blessing is God's opinion. Or the self-revelation of God. So on a higher level, blessing or glory is what God thinks about himself. Got it? Therefore, you have to be careful what you think about yourself. Yeah. <laughs> because if you think improperly about yourself, you're interfering with your glory. Therefore, if you're beating yourself up, the enemy don't need to do anything with you. Just sit back and watch. So here in the book of Acts chapter 7, this is when the young man of God, Stephen, was speaking. And when he began his discourse here in verse 2, he said, he answered, brethren and fathers, listen to me. And he said these words, the God of glory appeared to our forefather Abraham when he was still in Mesopotamia, which is present day Iraq before he went to live in Haran. Mm -hmm. Stephen is obviously rehearsing here from writings that we don't have in our Bible. Yeah. Because he makes it clear that Abraham did not move because he heard some voice in the atmosphere. He's making it plain that Abraham moved according to Genesis 12. That Abraham moved because he had a visitation. And he said specifically who appeared to Abraham. He said the God of glory appeared to Abraham and told him leave. Leave your father's house. Leave this nation. Leave everything, forget your father's will, and come to a place that I will show you. And Abraham obeyed God. Well, it is easier to obey 
someone like that who shows up. When someone like this shows up and appears to you and talks to you, you don't need to go and pray to find out if you should obey. <laughs> the person that is here is literally guaranteeing you mm -hmm. an extraordinary life. Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. Okay, you didn't hear that. What has happened with Christianity is that we have not received as much appearances mm -hmm. from higher intelligence wow. that puts us in a position that we live above faith yes. hmm. Come on. Come on. that our action ah. wow. not a result of praying to see if we should mm -hmm. but the response is we must yes. do this yes. because what is being offered to us is better than what we would get if we stayed so, Abraham, you have a choice. You can wait till your father dies to get his will. Or, you can forget his will, let your other brother get that, and get what we have for you. Okay. So, you can let go of the land, and let go of the house, and let go of the little inheritance that you think is going to be great for you down here, around here and come follow me and I will give you so much more than that it will make that look so the fact that Abraham had an appearance from the God of glory literally placed him in a position that he had to obey. I want something to happen in your life today from the God of glory, the Father of glory, that puts you in the position where you have to obey. Are you with me? That when people are why well, Abraham, why are you doing this? Abraham, why why are you leaving? You're the first more, you know, you know, you the first all of this don't come to you. Listen, listen, listen. Even though they come and say that to you, something has taken place in your psychology. Something has taken place in your experience that is bigger than what you're leaving. So the biggest thing that you can hold on to peels in comparison to what the God of glory has for you. So the reality of what I want to share with you today about the Father of glory is that we no longer want to be in a position where we're trying just to faith our way through life. We're in a position where the thing we are doing, we must do. Okay. The, the way that I am operating now, I must do this. So I must leave. Not that I am barely packing to leave and I'm crying because I'm trying to hold on to nostalgic stuff. I must leave based on who has appeared to me. Amen. Amen. The person who has appeared yes. to me does not want me here. Exactly. Amen. Okay. Amen. So receive a greater life operation today. Amen. In your life, in your family's life, in every area. Yes. I receive it. I receive it. That I am not just barely living by faith. I'm not just barely hoping that what I am doing is right. Or the step that I am taking is the right step. I'm not faith in it. I'm not hoping it. I know this is the right step I'm taking because of who appeared to me. Amen. 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 Amen.
Oh my God. I receive that. Our fathers in the Bible benefited on supernatural levels because of the visitations they had. Jericho wasn't conquered because they just had faith. Jericho was conquered because an angel showed up and said, walks for six days, seven times on the seventh day, then you show. Okay. Did you understand that? So we're not doing this by faith. We're doing this by a kind of obedience. Amen. Come on. That makes the four in Jericho laugh and say, what kind of war strategy is that? Do you all not see how thick these walls are? We can actually race chariots around on the top of these walls. But ladies and gentlemen, they don't know who they're obeying. Your adversary does not know who you are obeying based on being here today. Walls are coming down for you. So he says the God of glory appeared to our forefather Abraham when he was still in Iraq and told him to leave. You know, they had the Gulf War and found out that Saddam Hussein had all of Nimrod's treasure. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So yeah. it was a place of immense wealth itself. Yeah. Yeah. Historical evidence says that they were so wealthy and the technology and the information was so grand that in Abraham's day, they had toilets that were flushing. Yeah. Really? In Abraham's day, they had electrical technology. Yeah. Would, would, listen to me. Now, we have, and we live on a, in a solar system of a galaxy called the Milky Way. There's a galaxy called, the, well, the largest one they found today called IC1101. It's, it's a billion times the size of the Milky Way. A billion times. Can you understand the kind of angels that governs that galaxy? If, if one of those angels came here, can you imagine what it would be like showing them a solar panel? And can you imagine telling them we are up to 5G? <laughs> and this 5G, what is that? And you said, okay, this is our latest cell phone here. This is the Apple 14. It's a, a, you're all still at apples. <laughs> you're all still at fruit. <laughs> you only get it. You only get it. Y'all still in the eat? Y'all still in eating eating fruit, right? Oh my God! What we call top-notch technology is silliness to them. But I need you to understand that when God is calling us to something better, depending on the person who visits you then it is no longer just a matter of faith in it. It is, I must obey this person I just saw. And our parents in the Bible benefited from much more expressions and visitations. But Abraham got a visit from the God of glory. And eventually showed Abraham what the opinion is mm -hmm. that they had about him. Yes. And you shall all of the earth be blessed. Yes. Yes. Whoever blesses you, we will bless. Yes. Yes. Whoever curses you, we will curse. Yes. Yes. Says in your name, we're going to be great. Mm -hmm. 
They're going to make your name great in the earth. All the way back then, they told Abraham, your name is going to be great in the earth. Amen. Said, all you have to do is pack and leave and follow us. Yes. We're going to take you to where we really want you to end up. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in Genesis 24, 1, that when Abraham got old, that the Lord had blessed him in all things. There was no area of Abraham's life where the blessing did not touch. If you receive this today, the blessing will flow. And it will flow into areas of your life that it has not touched as yet. Listen, am I talking to anybody in the room that you want the blessing to touch areas of your life that has not yet worked? I'm, listen, I'm really serious about this today. We want the blessing to flow into and touch areas that it has not yet touched. Unlock areas that it has not yet unlocked. Activate areas it has not yet activated. So many times the difference is somebody's blessing is working better. It's flowing better. It's going into areas and unlocking things, doing things for the person. And then we look at them and we get jealous. He, she thinks she, he thinks she, he, and all this stuff going on. And it's just a different flow. It's, it's a person's 220, 240, 360 versus your 110. So everything is working better because the blessing is flowing better. May your blessing flow better today. May your blessing flow better for you today. In the name of Jesus. Now, here's what is critical for us to understand. And I want to go into this very, very seriously today. Jesus' life worked better because he understood this on a level that most human beings did not understand. And even some of the folk around him only began to really sense the activity of what was happening to him. That his existence in this realm was a product of the Father of Glory. In other words, Jesus was fathered at the highest level of fathering or fatherhood you could have. Nobody that walked this earth was ever fathered better than Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Now, John chapter 8, verse 54. Please write it down. And from today, you're going to move into a better relationship with God as the Father of glory. Amen. You're going to find out today exactly how much our Father loves us. <laughs> if I really actually told folk who my Father is, they, they would not believe me. But even David told us, the Lord told him, you are my son. If David walked around and told folk, the Lord is my father, there. But he told you, Psalms 2, 7, I will tell you the decree of the Lord. I will tell you what the Lord told me, or my son, this day have I begotten you. Which means I'm, I'm your daddy from today. Not, not Jesse. Not Jesse. Not Jesse. Not Edwin. They can't give you what I can. Amen. 
I want you to have a better relationship with this father from today. Now, listen to this. You got it? Jesus answered. They're, they're talking, about, talking to him about his life, doing all the things he's doing. And he said, if I were to glorify myself, magnify praise and honor myself, I would have no real glory. For my glory would not would be nothing and worthless. My honor must come to me from my father. My honor must my honor must come to me from my father. Your honor in this realm. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about people. Stop worrying about what people say. Forget about what people think. Because if something happens to you and you leave this realm, they will carry on. No matter if they call you old or not. My honor comes to me from my father. You cannot interfere with that. <laughs> it is my father who glorifies me. Who extols me. Who magnifies me. And praises me. And he says, of whom you say that he is your God, but nothing ain't happening. So he can't be your God if. I'm freeing you today from the God church gave you to the one that met our father Abraham. Do you listen to what I'm saying? The God church gave us got us in limbo waiting on some rapture to take place. And got you in this I know one of these days I know one of these days. I know one of these days. But which day is it? I'm introducing you today to the Father of Glory. That while you are here, He's sending honor to you. He's extolling you. He's talking about you. You didn't hear what I said. He's talking about you when other folk are talking against you. So he goes on to tell them, your problem is that you do not recognize him. And ladies and gentlemen, in Christianity, that is one of the big problems to why one man of God gets to do things and another man of God can't do it. Listen, we have been on radio for 18 years, second only to Holmes Williams. Okay. How can you do that unless the Father honors you? And in 18 years, we've never missed a payment. In 18 years, a check has never bounced. Then it means that there's something that the Father of Glory gives to that child yes. Come on. so that the result 
and that child's life is stupendous. Yes. That if another person tries it, if another man of God or woman of God tries it, they'll meet at an end where they say, oh, let's get more support. We cannot continue. But how does a man not say we need more support and always have support? Okay, y'all got to listen to what I'm saying. Did you, you ask Providence or you ask anyone here if we've ever said on the broadcast, we need you to support the broadcast? No. Why? Because you have to meet with the Father of glory. He has to hand over a certain honor to you that the person next to you, in front of you, behind you, didn't get from him. So that in this realm, you do not have to worry because you know that in Barbados, the moment you start rising up, people will come at you. You, you start a business today. Bless God, somebody going to come right next to you and bring their coconuts to you. Uh, you, don't, you don't have to say anything. You, you start a ministry in Barbados, and before you know it, somebody's going to be trying to, to pull you down. But in order to be successful in Barbados, listen to me, in order to go to school and learn well in order to be there and do well in the midst of everybody else that's there. You must go there with something from your father. Yes. Yes. Amen. That's right. Yes. Yep. Amen. See, when when Kevin was at UE and he was apostle in training, he was at UE and we were talking about his studies and everything, I gave him a mantra. I said, this is what I want you to repeat when you're studying. I want you to repeat this every day. I want you to put it in your mind. My father had to give him something. Until the four in his class said, we want to study with you. But in order to do it well in this room, you must be properly fathered. Yes. Oh, man, that's right. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to say this right. All, all the folk in here who are saying, uh, I never had a good relationship with my father. I ain't dealing with that. Exactly. That's not what I'm talking about. Don't go into that low self-esteem. Thank exactly. God your father made sure you got here. Because yes. exactly. for some of us, if our fathers have stayed in our lives, it will be hell. So thank God that he was honest enough to, to drop the seed off and move on. I know y'all don't want to clap. I know y'all don't want to sing. You know, I don't talk about those kind of things. And, I ain't coming back. You better come back. And before we hold on to all this low self-esteem, depression stuff all the time, you know, and then, you know, you watch some movie and see some father you know, running on the beach with his son or some mother running on the beach with her daughter and you like you just sit here. <laughs> you speak up, man, shut up. You know? <laughs> you know, man, fall, just allow themselves to fall into a whole heap yes. of, of ghetto mess. You don't need to be home watching all those Lifetime movies. You know? I wish my Christmas was like this. I wish. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. They'll be worried about all these different little things. I know what I'm talking about. But one of the things that you have to make sure you, that you get in this room from God is proper fathering. And it doesn't happen just because you give your life to Jesus. 
you have to literally move in such a way with him that he releases his glory to you. So, what you want is proper fathering from the divine. Who you need in your life right now is the father of glory. The God that unlocks opinion upon you. The God that does not allow your past to grip your life so much that it interferes with your future. Come on, That's right. The God that took Job's life and in the midst of everything that went wrong when it was over had twice as much of it. Twice as much as he had before. Our fathers like Jacob that the Lord told him, I will not leave you until I have done everything that I have promised you. This concept, ladies and gentlemen, that I'm bringing to you today is going to help you understand that at this season of life, the manifestations that are to come to you are really not about how much money you have right now. It has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with your financial status right now. It all has to deal with if the Father of glory is fathering you. If your life is being affected by him, or if you're like these people who are looking at Jesus and talking about Jesus and still telling Jesus, you're getting all of this happening in your life, and he tells them it's because my father is fathering me properly. And you say that you know him, but nothing is happening. That something is wrong with who you know. Because the one I know and the one I have a relationship, he honors me. He extols me. He magnifies me. He glorifies me. There, there, you can see that something is coming to me from him all the time. He's not even waiting on me to pray for it or to ask for it. Yeah, y'all need to cop a little better than that, though. I mean. So that the children of God, from the apostolic perspective, you're not put under all of this rigid Christianity. Mm, come on. It's true. It's so true. The issue is not how much you pray or how hard you pray. The issue is what is the relationship like? Oh boy. Oh Jesus. Oh boy. Oh God have mercy. I'm introducing you today to the Father of Glory. Can you lift your hands if you want that relationship today? Come on. But you say I'm 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 working and you're gonna see the Father of Glory taking care of me better from today. You're going to see the Father of Glory taking care of me better from today. You're going to see the Father of Glory taking care of my husband better, my wife better, my children better, my business better. So please understand why I'm sharing this with you so that you get to realize that the Father of Glory, the Father of Glory, does not deal with us all the same way. Yes. Which is why it becomes critical now for us as children of God to pursue that relationship. Yes. Yes. Which separates us mm -hmm. from the other individuals out there. Yes. And that even though we may be all Christians, mm -hmm. even though we may be going to church, 
it is not going to be happening for all of us the same way. But for those who understand that our father Abraham was visited by the God of glory, says, boy, listen, from today you are going to be so shocked at what we're going to be doing. Do you understand it? And you know the story. I'm just saying some things till I get to my point. You know the story how Abraham left, ended up down in Egypt. And you know how they grabbed Sarah and just whisked her into the palace and got her all bathing her up and everything. You know, got her there in jacuzzi, bless God, got her all up in, in milk, you know, washing her hair with berries and yeah, all of Ole. You all know, hear what I'm saying? Got her nails all done and all fine in her, got her hair all braided, and got her smelling, getting ready to bring her before the king, and the king is in his bed chamber just laying, laying down, feeling good. Tomorrow's gonna be a great day. Glory to God. God, it's gonna be a great day. Hearing himself, got her early in the morning, brushing his teeth, bless God, and slicking back his ear. And man, before that could happen, the Lord showed up to him and said, Hey, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, but God, but listen, I, I, you know, I did this in the sincerity of my heart. It was, I, 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 the man said, it's just like the man said, man, listen, you better sort this out or you dead. <laughs> and you know what the Bible says about that? He blessed Abraham, gave Abraham, made his servant, made his servant, camels, oxen, donkeys, sheep. Asses, give him all and give him gold and silver, bless God, and call Sarah and said, Listen, see here, I have compensated this brother of yours. <laughs> you see? And and Genesis 31 says, When Abraham left, that he was very rich. Yeah. Look, the man that drove a stroke to be rich. I mean, <laughs> the man that were a dead, cut God to rich billionaire status. Y'all not here. That's that's fathering, man. That's, that's where you're probably fathering. Now, before I go any further, I want you to lift your hands if you want to have this today. I want to decree and declare a, 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 an even greater relationship with the Father of Glory today. I want you to lift your hands. I know that there are things that are troubling you. I can sense it. I can feel it. There are things that are bothering you and troubling you about your life and, and going forward and what the future is going to be like. But I want you to know today that when you leave here, you'll be under a new relationship with the Father of Glory. I want to guarantee you things are going to begin to work. I want to guarantee you that things are going to change for the better. I want to guarantee you that it is not going to be as hard as it was last week, as it is going to be this week. Because the Father of glory has shown up today to explain himself to you, to say to you, this is the relationship you have been missing with me, and I'm sorting that relationship out with you and your household today. I'm going to remove all the pain and the stress from all off your life. All of the pressure, all of the weight that has come on you, I'm going to take it off of you. And what looks bad, I'm going to turn it around and make it good for you. I'm going to show up in your life like I showed up in Jesus' life. I want you to lift your hands if you're ready for this level of relationship with the Father of Glory. So from today, it will cease to be difficult. From today, it will cease to be difficult for you. Can I get you to release that to somebody near to you? Tell them from today. It will cease to be difficult for you. The Father of glory has shown up in your life today. Receive him today in Jesus' name. Now lift those hands and begin to give him praise. Come on. Are you with me? So I need you to receive uh, this on another level and take your Christianity beyond where it currently is.
you know, I remember being in Trinidad and uh, the folk that were there, you know, they had some problems and the lady was saying, oh my God, oh my God, we have to do this here. Uh, I told her, I said, just relax, stop worrying, stop worrying about it. I said, my parents are going to take care of me. And she was like, my, your parents? I said, yeah, my, my parents are going to take care of me. And long story short, everything worked out. And I said, you know what? I don't understand this because the last thing that something similar like this happened, we had to go through this and go through that and go through the next. And we had to pay this and pay the next. I told her, my parents are going to take care of me. Christianity is intelligence. Yes, yes. Come on. Come on. And unlike what people say, what you don't know can't hurt you, that is not true. What you don't know can be killing you all now. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So I want you to watch this. This is John 1, verse 14. Then I want to get over into the. the depth of what I want to explain to you what he's attempting to do and the word Christ became flesh human incarnate and tabernacle fixed his tank of flesh lived a while among us and we actually saw his glory okay his honor and his majesty I want you to watch this I want you to watch this such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father. So what he was walking in, his father gave him. Full of grace, fear for loving kindness and truth. They said we saw his glory. But the glory that we saw was the glory that an only begotten son can receive from a father. Okay, I need that to sink in. Therefore, Jesus was not walking around with anything that he did on his own. It wasn't anything he fasted for. I'm not discounting those things. I'm just telling you what scripture says. Scripture says he was fathered better. What we saw him operating in is what his father gave him. What we saw him operating in is what his father gave him. No man can take anything to himself. He has to be contented to operate in what the father gives him. So many times when people say, oh, I, I fasted seven hours every day for a month. Great. But you have to tell people it is not your length of fasting that gave you that. The Father decided that He will let you be exposed to that kind of anointing. Not because you fasted, because He decided. And let me explain what I mean because another person can go and start fasting seven hours a day for a month and get nothing. And wonder why I did the same thing you did and got nothing from it and you did it and got something from it. Why? The issue is a different fathering. May you be fathered different from today. Now I'm sharing with you secrets today. Biblical secrets to help you understand that when Jesus was on the earth he was the happiest kid around. So the happiest kid around yes he was the happiest child around because even at two all the gold frankincense and myrrh he needed showed up and it came from the east from some men who looked at a star okay every ounce of power you saw Jesus operating in it was because of his father. It is my father in me that's doing the works. 
Oh my God. So, what happens in Christianity is that we are not driven to actually have this relationship with the Father to receive glory from Him. And then things happen and roll on and roll on in this realm. And then we say, oh, I, I, well, I, I guess God didn't want it to happen. Or I guess, well, maybe it wasn't the will of the Lord. But you have to understand it's God's will for us to be blessed in all amen. things. Yes, amen. Yes, amen. Amen. God, thank you, Lord. How do I understand that Jesus was the most excited child on the earth realm as a child because in our day can you really stop to think that at 33 years old he completed his assignment here okay. how, many, how many folk in here in their 30s let me see okay some folk like they ain't not sure <laughs> when Jesus was your ears, his was his your when Jesus was your age, he had completed his assignment. <laughs> you would have to be seriously fathered in order to carry out your assignment so rapidly yes, 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 yes. and be on point at every prophetic stage of your life that everything is happening in your life exactly at the time the place where it is supposed to happen you would have to be seriously fathered and you know sometimes at our age we don't even know what the purpose is we're still struggling to get to that one stage or that one ministry or that one event where somebody calls us up and say, I, 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 see, I see the prophetic is on you. you see? And this is where you have to be careful. They tell you the prophetic is on you. They didn't say you're a prophet. <laughs> wow. right, let me get back to my message before I get myself in trouble here because, you know, it's can't be easy to call. <laughs> okay but what we want is the relationship between us and the father of glory Amen. that is what most of us have not really prayed about and asked for because I've learned that God as far as we know God is concerned i found out that god does not love everybody the same and folk would say i know that if you were the last person will say if you were the last person on this earth if you were the only person on this earth god loved you so much he would have still sent jesus hmm. you might have that last person was hitler you know bless god you <laughs> but in this realm, it is what you have the knowledge of and where you are willing to take your life in terms of your relationship with God, not with church. Got it? Now, let's go to this. Let's see how the Apostle Paul, in his praying for what he did. This is Ephesians 1, verse 17. Now, I'm just using a couple of things and then I want to get to my main point here to help you understand when you leave here, you understand this is what I'm doing from now on. I'm not playing games with my Christianity. Amen. I'm not playing games with my walk with God. Amen. I, I see now what I want and I know what I'm going after. And I, I refuse to live a life without the glory of my Father. So you can be in a room with all other men of God and God will use this one differently. Yeah. Right. And another man of God will sit there and go, oh God, what happened? 
happened? What happened? That he says, you don't understand. I'm fathering him better. Our relationship is tender. Okay. Our relationship is tighter, so I give him more glory. Listen, I give him more honor. I talk about him more up here than I talk about you. When I'm talking with the four up here in my dimension, I talk about him more than I talk about you. Matter of fact, I'm always talking about him. God. So the angels up here hear me talk about him more. They respond to him differently. They respond to her differently. You got it? And then you people wouldn't understand what's going on between you and what's happening down here. And they can't realize that the man or the woman, they're being fathered better. If you can believe today that the God of glory has a life for you that is beyond what you are capable of buying. What your pocket can afford. When, when God speaks to a man of God and tells him the house that you're building, the house you're building, the house you're building. And the Lord instructs him, okay, go ahead and get the mortgage for the house. But you'll pay that mortgage off in three years. You'll pay that $3.5 million off in three years. True story. You'll pay it off in three years. In Barbados, people struggle to pay off 250000 and have that for 20 and 25 years. And God told a man of God, his man, you'll pay off in three in three years. Amen. And three years to the day, it was paid off and he was a millionaire. Amen. What's the difference? What's the difference? The Father of glory. What's the difference? The Father of glory. What's the difference? The Father of glory. So when the Father of glory gets involved in your financial affairs, he means I'm going to make some things happen for you that's going to cause that money to come to you so fast that in three years it will be paid off. He's going to father you better. There's some things I decree over your life you will pay off faster than they have assigned for you to do. That means the Father of glory has now unlocked the vault. Not the one that got the answers locked in, but he's, he's unlocked the vault of supernatural financial dealings in your life. I want to declare right now, speak this over your life, release this to apostolic prophetic declaration that there is an anointing and acceleration of supernatural money coming to you right now that is going to cause you to be free financially, that is going to bring you into debt free living, that's going to lift you up above where you are. And God Almighty, the Father of glory, will release a new fathering on your life in this season that He will personally get involved in making sure that whatever has to come to you to fulfill his word and his will over your life, it will come to you without fear and nothing will be capable of stopping this great flow of blessing, this avalanche of blessing, this avalanche of financial resources, this avalanche of money, this avalanche of power that's coming into your life in this season. The Lord God Almighty is ripping you out of the hand of your adversary that wants to keep you in black and wants to keep you impoverished. But today, the Father of glory says, it is over. It is over. It is over. It is finished. I'm canceling whatever needs to be canceled in your life to bring you into the victory, the freedom, the liberty that I have for you today in Jesus' name. Lift your hands and shout about that if you receive it. 
every car payment, every credit card payment, every mortgage in the name of Jesus, every torch bill, every camp shepherd bill, every coolie man bill, glory be to God be canceled today in the name of Jesus. Father of glory, the Father of glory, reach around, touch three people, and tell them the Father of glory is visiting you today. Father of glory is visiting you today. Ah. Yeah, glory be to God. Ah, glory be to God. Lift up your hands and begin to give him praise. Lift up your hands and begin to give him praise. That's not a suggestion. Come on, that's a command. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Lift up your hands and give him praise. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, people, listen. Let's prophesy to the people today. The Father of glory is here. Lift up your hands and give him praise today. Hallelujah. I don't want you going to frenzy today because you they may have. 
I want you to hasudele mehuta kusha. I want to kashune mehuta pekusha muhasuti yo muhosa ishuti yo muhu. Akushine mo sikuti muha. I umu kosu shalu muhota yo muhu. Ikuni muhusa nu muhatu ya muhu. Iya muhoshi kito mehetu ya. Akule meheshi etana mehese tu mehinda. I the Lord the Father of Glory has come to visit you to relieve you of all the burdens that you need to relieve you to see the needs of all the stress of all the pressure of all the sickness of all the reports that are not favorable i the lord is in your midst the father of glory and i am ready to father you i am ready to lift you up i am ready to hold you in my hand i am ready to show myself strong on your behalf i am here says the lord i am here i am here i am here and i am here for you i am here for you i am here for you i am here kashia i masahashu ya I will cut them down. I will cut them down. I will cut them down. Stop, Shatuni. Shatuni have to stop worrying. Stop worrying. Don't be frustrated. I am ready. I am ready to cut them down. Says the Father of Glory. I am ready to do it. I am ready to do it. Say not I am long in being. Say not at the end. Say not it's too long. Cause I, the Father of Glory, will certainly. I am your Hushi, your Muhu. I am your Hilo Hishuya. I am your Hushi, your Muhushaya. Hasuya Maha. Let Hashuya Maha Tuya. Let me be your source. Let me be your father. Let me be everything. Let me be your sufficiency. And I will prove my love. I will prove myself to you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord. Let's put those hands and give him praise now. Come on. That's not a praise. That's lift up your hands and give him praise now. Come on. Glory to God, hallelujah. 
लिए Hallelujah. 